Welcome to the Dead Pixel Society podcast, the photo imaging industry's leading news source. Here's your host, Gary Peugeot. The Dead Pixel Society podcast is brought to you by Media Clip, Advertech Printing, and IP Labs. Hello again, and welcome to the Dead Pixel Society podcast. I'm your host, Gary Peugeot, and today we're joined by Jan Ole Schmidt, who's in product management at Leading Photo Lab Whitewall, and he's coming to us from Cologne, Germany. Hi, Jan Ole. How are you today? Uh, hi, Gary. I'm fine. It's summer here and in Germany, and yeah, all is good. All is good. And all is good at Whitewall, because we've been getting a lot of product announcements and news of innovations coming from the company. We're going to talk about that in a few minutes. But first, can you kind of talk about the history of Whitewall for those few people who don't know about the company? Yeah, sure. Um, so Whitewall has been founded um, roughly 15 years ago in 2007 um, by Alexander Niesmann, who's our CEO. He's still in the company. And um He's a professional photographer, and then he started his own photo lab, which was Whitewall. And um, we were producing gallery grade images for um, for Lumas, for example, for Lumas galleries, but also for other photographers. And um, mm -hmm. then um, the company grew over time, and we moved over to a new production facility here, and we got larger and. Today, uh, we have about 200 um, employees, 200 colleagues. And you're international. You're not just Germany. You're, you've expanded actually over here or across the pond, too. Yeah, that's true. So we are based in Cologne and our production facility, our lab is in Cologne, but we ship in over 50 countries in the world. So we've expanded over the, the whole planet, basically. <laughs> so one of the things that I think differentiates a white wall from some of the other output providers is the emphasis on like gallery quality because the quality yes. of the finishing and the output can hang in an art gallery as well as a living room. Can, can you talk a little bit about like when the company started, was that always the objective was to bring that to everybody or was it just to work in uh, art galleries? Mm. No, it was always the plan to um, to combine basically both worlds. So the professional world where photographers are at home, and um, the the world of um, yeah the the hobbyists or enthusiast photographers. Mm -hmm. So um, the non professional ones, basically. Right. Um, but for all these customers, we wanted to offer gallery grade. Um, prints and frames and all this the products that we offer so yes mm -hmm. this was the initial plan can you explain the relationship with loomis because i am not a fine art aficionado so i'm not really aware of i mean i've heard of the name but what is their position in that market uh so loomis is um obviously it's a gallery you can go to and buy art and the idea behind loomis was not to have um, editions of a few copies at high prices, but um, instead to have a yeah, larger amount of copies and um, lower the price, but still it's limited editions in mm -hmm. most cases. Mm -hmm. um, and of course, the focus was on quality because you spend, even if it's not that expensive as it might be in traditional art galleries, but it's still um, some money that you spend. So you mm -hmm. expect a good quality. And that mm -hmm. was. Um, yeah, that's mm -hmm. what is uh, the idea of Lumas. Now, one of the things that makes uh, an old timer like me feel warm and fuzzy towards uh, Whitewall is you still call yourself a photo lab and you actually yeah. print on um, silver halide media as for a lot of the stuff you're doing for some of your large prints that are, you know, mounted and finished in just uh, exquisite way, the way they're, the the final product is done. Can you talk a little bit about that process where you're, you're where you're marrying sort of the digital slash analog process with silver halide media with uh, the you know acrylic and some of the other uh, media that is put with it to make it durable and long lasting? Yes, so um, it's true. We still call us ourselves a photo lab. Um, we are not only a photo lab. Of course, so of course. So we we are at home in in yeah again both worlds, but. Um, we print on classic silver halide paper, um, which is a um, mm -hmm. Fuji paper for color uh, images, and it's Ilford paper for black and white. Mm -hmm. um, also, is one of our 
yeah special things or uh, that we have to offer mm -hmm. is um is this pure black and white uh, footprints which is also c -pr and what you can do is um you can have them mounted on aluminum on d-bond um you can have them like face mounted under acrylic and um, you can also have them framed which is um yeah quite a large range of products that <laughs> we have and there's yeah there's a lot we do with mm -hmm. these photo prints with these classic seed prints so that's why we call us a photo lab <laughs> it's just kind of interesting because so many of the labs now that have gone mostly digital nothing wrong with mostly digital right i mean but obviously yeah. for a lot of the market that i'm sure you deal with the fine art market and some of those they sure. really want that photographic look or feel or whatnot so i mean it's it's you could call it a bit like the the old word but um it's still high quality and what we also did is um i don't know if you heard about the ultra hd prints that we introduced in um 2016 at photokina in cologne here um, which was that's prints with a higher resolution than what was possible before um, okay. we have new um new machines to print them and also um we're using the new um and are still using of course the new um fuji crystal maxima paper which mm -hmm. um fuji was um improving and it's not something that we um still do but don't love it or so it's it's what we focus on and mm -hmm. we still want to improve this mm -hmm. um the c prints so and also you do kind of some of the uh, old school things like providing ICC profiles and test prints sure. for people, which, you know, I'm sure you don't do that much for the amateur market, but I'm sure there's a lot of enthusiast photographers who appreciate that. Yeah. Yeah, that's true. I mean, um, if you, if you spend a lot of time on um, editing your images and of course, also before that, you just spend a lot of time on taking the photo, right? <laughs> right. And um, you want it exactly the way uh, to look the way that you have in mind. Mm -hmm. um, that's why we still offer your yeah, ICC profiles for almost all media that we have mm -hmm. so that you can do the soft proofing in, in Photoshop, for example. And also we have this test print, mm -hmm. which get a watermark and then you get a discount on the price so that you can try different papers with your own image mm -hmm. um, and for the color reproduction, for resolution and also the surfaces, of course. Um, so we we offer quite large sizes and frames so we are or we have products in our range that um cost some money so um <laughs> you, you don't just buy a print for, with a frame uh, for like four hundred dollars and you hope that you're lucky with the colors right, right? exactly so, um that's um why we are doing that yeah and it's for the professionals and also for some of the enthusiasts because mm -hmm. um i mean as you know they are also quite involved in the technical stuff right sure <laughs> sure so let's talk a little bit about the framing because that's a an interesting offering for this because obviously in the gallery world you offer framing but you offer the same quality framing and the same quality variety of choices mm -hmm. that you do so can you talk about uh that process because that's sort of a a challenge i think to represent uh, on a website what a frame is going to look like what that feel is going to be as you mentioned it's not that easy to show what a frame will look like on the website so that's why we invested a lot recently in creating a new online configuration process and a 3d preview which um, I would say is the best that you can have in the market currently, um, which is really based on 3D models of the frames and also of the products themselves. So you can see what the product would look like quite mm -hmm. well and see the colors uh, in combination with your image, which is, by the way, also great fun to just upload your own image that you took the, the other day and then are proud of, mm -hmm. uh, hopefully, and then just flip through the products that we have and mm -hmm. um it's re it's great fun and it looks good and great and we know that we have to do everything that's possible to to make decisions easier for customers mm -hmm. because roughly 100 different frames that we offer which is um of course yeah it's a large number to decide between and um mm -hmm. yeah so that's why we know it's and then you add awful. that on top of the, all the possible print size combinations you have 
and you're talking exactly. thousands of iterations of possible products that you might offer through for yeah. one picture. Yeah, exactly. You can have a different sizes, different paper types. Um, you can have matted frames, print the frameless acrylic prints and mm. all the stuff. So yeah, there's quite a large amount of mm. uh, different options. Uh, I encourage people to go obviously to Whitewall and check out the, the the configurator. Can you talk a little bit about what that experience is like for the end user? They upload their image and then they can actually see it on a representative wall. It's not a wall of their own home yet. Stay with us. We'll be right back. Photo retailers, energize your sales with Share Me Chat, the proven texting platform. Using chat to text on your website keeps your customers connected and buying. See us at Pro and IPI to find out why dealers using ShareMe Chat close more sales without adding staff. Find out more at ShareMe.chat. Yeah, true. Um, yeah, exactly. You upload your image and then you start in the configuration process with some default um, settings or with, mm -hmm. with the product that you have chosen before. Um, and depends a bit on where you start the process but um, then you have an image your image on the wall it could be framed or not or um, whatever it's the settings are and um, yeah it's it's an example wall um, just more or less for size reference mm -hmm. so sure. that you can um, because that's also something that's quite hard for customers to mm -hmm. decide on the size right right and or if they're doing multiple see, prints they want to see how they're arranged yeah, true. So that's why we, we, we did this. And if you want to switch to 3D, you can simply click on the image uh, that's on the wall and in, in the configuration process. And then you, you turn it a bit and then the wall disappears and you can rotate the product. Mm -hmm. um, so you can see how, um, how glossy the surface is. And um, you can also see what the wall mounts on the back yeah. look like. Yeah, because um, that's super important which, in your hanging. These, yeah. I mean, some of these prints can be very heavy. These acrylic prints. True. Oh my God. Yeah, exactly. Um, it can be heavy. And so if you can see before you place your order how the wall mount looks, then you can figure out how to mount it to the wall. So, one of the things that I think makes, again, sets White Wall apart from other photo labs is the fact you do have uh, physical places where you can go experience, uh, uh, see White Wall prints. You've got, obviously, if you go to a Loomis Gallery, you can go see what other people's work is, but you also have your own physical uh, stores. Can you talk a little bit about those? We have, as we are based in Germany, we have four own stores here in Germany. Mm -hmm. And we have corporations with Lumas, as you mentioned, and also with Leica, mm -hmm. because Leica also has stores and galleries. Because, um, yeah, obviously... It's, it's not that easy to have stores around the, the whole planet. So um, that's why we mm -hmm. are partnering here with them. And um, But you can go to them uh, in, in the US. It's, um, for example, Lumas in New York or Leica in LA, uh, where you can go to and see our products, talk to colleagues, um, to our colleagues, mm -hmm. if you want to see products or if you are not sure if your image is good enough to print it in a mm -hmm. certain size, for example. Or just to see what that type of print looks and feels like. Like you said, you know, is there is there a texture to the to the surface? Is it glossy? Yeah. Is it matte? Is, I think that is one of the things that's kind of been missing from photo output in the last few years with so much push to the online is, you know, there is a value to the end user to actually seeing and holding representatives of that sample output. I, I think that's mm -hmm. something that's been missing, actually. So I, I think it's interesting you've gone that way with what you're doing. True. So we have this multi-channel approach and mm -hmm. um, we also offer sample sets, for example. So if you cannot go to one of our stores or this um, partner stores, then you can still have sample sets sent to your home, which is um, including whatever product category you choose. So mm -hmm. it's all our acrylic um, options in one box. So mm -hmm. you can um, mm -hmm. see what the glossy surface uh, looks like, what the non-reflective surface looks like, mm -hmm. um, which is of course not the same if, as if you see it online in images or in this 3D models, or if you have mm -hmm. it in your hands. 
Mm -hmm. And in the end, the having prints in a physical way is the basic idea of white wall. So right. exactly. that's why we obviously make us make it as easy as possible for our customers to experience. This. Right. So you're practicing what you preach is what you're saying. True. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> so since all your production is in Germany, how the heck do you get the product so fast here to the U.S.? Because that's one of the things you like to talk about in your marketing videos is, is that you actually you can deliver fairly quickly here to the United yeah. States. Yes, it's possible to ship to the U.S. pretty fast from Germany. And um, there's two things that make this possible. One is that we are based in Cologne. And the airport at Cologne is the hub for UPS and also for FedEx. So um, we just have to drive the products to the airport and then they pack them into their airplanes and mm -hmm. fly over to the US. Mm -hmm. And while they are doing this, of course, this due to the different time zones, <laughs> this is also it's time um, travel. It's good for us. It's almost like time travel because if, when they, they almost arrive at the same time of the day, then they depart here. Right. In this direction, it's an, an advantage. Of course, the other way around, it would be a disadvantage, but this is good. So basically we start shipping if, if the plane lands in New York, then from there, it's basically the same as it would start from here because mm. we did not lose any time. <laughs> <laughs> it's actually really fast. I've checked the um, delivery times before and it's three to four days. So depending on the, in average, depending yeah. on the product. Um, of course, plain prints, it's faster because it does not take that long to frame. So a bit longer, but in the average, it's um, three to four days, which is pretty fast. It's very competitive. The, yeah. Obviously, the customer's paying for shipping or something, but is there any, do you wait longer for a larger print? Like you said, because there's more processing involved as opposed to a just normal print? Not really. Okay. It, it's almost the same time for larger prints it's it might be one day longer but mm -hmm. it's not significantly longer mm -hmm. what we also do is we build the packaging mm -hmm. for every single order because it has to fit and as i said we have mm -hmm. this custom sizes for almost all products mm -hmm. that's um what is done mm -hmm. in the process yeah that's yeah. one of the things i was going to ask you about was the packaging because obviously shipping a 400 hundred dollar us uh, print across the ocean you want to make sure it's going to get there intact and in, in pristine condition and from what i understand you do have a lot of custom technology or process that you use to package the prints and make them safe and uh, secure on their journey across the ocean yeah that's quite a challenge to do to create packaging um, which will arrive intact mm -hmm. as you said while crossing the ocean and as we all know, it's it's not that the shipping companies treat the <laughs> like like eggs or something. So um, <laughs> it, we have to build really stable um, mm -hmm. packaging, and we do this in different materials. Could be mm -hmm. full wooden box if you mm -hmm. order, for example, a white one master print, which is uh, the largest product that we offer. Mm -hmm. um, it's up to ninety six by ninety four inches, which is uh, and produced seamless. So it's a huge print, right. um, and uh, you you have to build a custom wooden box for this. Yeah, for sure. and I would imagine because frames come in different widths that you just can't have a standard master print size box. You've got to have different adjustments based on the size of the frames involved because some are wider, some are thinner, some are, you know. True. Hearing that from you, it sounds a bit, so I think now we basically build two products. If you order <laughs> one, we send you the product that you ordered and we send you a packaging, which is, which is also custom made. <laughs> but, custom packaging company too. You didn't even know it. Yeah, true. Yeah. <laughs> So one of the other ways, obviously, a photo lab can distinguish themselves is through customer service. You can talk a little bit about some of the ways you help customers choose the right product for them and be more satisfied, because that is another way that you've distinguished yourself is providing that level of service. Yeah, exactly. So as we already uh, mentioned, we have our stores. Mm -hmm. um, so you can go there, but you can also call them. Mm -hmm. You can arrange um, video calls with them, uh, discuss 
your image and the perfect product for it. And um, we also have a, a dedicated US team mm -hmm. when we speak about the US market. And they will also assist you if you are um, a photographer and mm -hmm. need um, prints mm -hmm. for your exhibition. So you can or... actually talk to a human. Yeah, you can talk to humans. Yes, <laughs> that's uh, <laughs> um, and they will give you good answers um, and they will help you. That's a bonus. <laughs> True. Yeah. And of course, we also have a customer service. Uh, so you can call us if mm. you have customer sure, sure, questions sure. on um, on an order you placed or something like that. Mm. So, um, yeah, there's a lot we do to help customers um, mm -hmm. decide on the perfect print or the perfect framing. So where do you think the the trends are now that we're hopefully we're done with COVID for a while? Because I know there was a lot of disruption market. There was a trend line, then there was a disruption. And then, you know, depending on the business, some people did very well during COVID because people had a lot of pictures. They could sit and make photo books, but then they haven't been traveling. So they haven't been capturing new pictures to, to print now. So there's been kind of a bubble or a, a dip in that business. But really, it seems like the home decor business overall the home presentation market, I like to talk about where you're displaying images, where you're displaying uh, things that are meaningful to you. Maybe you're not going to print a thousand of them. You're going to print one masterpiece picture. That seems to be really catching on. Do you see that growth continuing or are people going to run out of wall space soon? I, I hope they are not running out of wall space soon. Um, <laughs> and I don't think so um, because it's, I would say we are almost back on track after COVID mm -hmm. and um, people go out, they travel, they take photos. Also our professional photographers or the customers mm -hmm. of us who are professional photographers have their jobs, they have um, their projects, um, they have their exhibitions. Mm -hmm. When you have your pictures on, on, on your wall, then after some years, I mean, I, I guess you experience the same. There's a point where you want something new, mm -hmm. right? You, you took new pictures, you maybe you improved your skills and then mm. the old one doesn't really represent, represent you anymore. So right. you want a new one. Um, so we, we are very optimistic for the future um, in terms of printing. Also, um, if, if we talk about printing in general, because you can see your images on screens, obviously, yeah. on phones and all this stuff. We are also very optimistic on that, that people want to print their images. They want to touch them, feel them, mm. make them real in a way. Yeah. And uh, it's it's a bit like we, we have this music streaming, like Apple Music or Spotify or whatever. So you can buy music on uh, vinyl, so which is like the music that means a lot to you. Right. It's what you want to have in, mm -hmm. in a physical way. And that's the same for images. Right. So you can take a lot of images and see them on the screen, but mm -hmm. the ones that really mean a lot to you, mm -hmm. you might want to have them printed. And mm -hmm. we sure. don't see that this is, um, mm -hmm. it's not the case in the future. So we are very optimistic there. Yeah, it's it's very authentic, as the kids would say these days, True. To, to print a picture. Yeah. And, you know, it's not like the old days and uh, the analog days where you had to print every picture to see it, right? You had to go through the chemical process yeah. and print it. And now people can really pick and choose which are the most meaningful pictures to them that they want to share, not only digitally, but they can also share physically. So, yeah. And it's great that there's options like white wall because it is really a step above what you can get in terms of uh, quality uh, compared to uh, most amateur type prints right you can get that museum grade and you're probably not going to get a lot of them right i mean I, i'm sure you have a lot of repeat customers but uh, most people probably more than you know every couple of years or so may buy a white wall print just because it's so special exactly and um as you said in the in the old times every image had to be printed to to be visible and <laughs> um of course you could still print all your digital images right. um and there's there is um there's comp there are companies who do this um, small prints and large volumes, mm -hmm. but we don't uh, we don't focus on that. So right. we focus on the special images in larger formats. Does not always have to be huge, or right. um, we, obviously we can also do small ones. But mm -hmm. um, yes, we can. We, we focus on the special images. Mm -hmm. Well, it's great to hear the optimism coming out of somebody in the photo printing business, where can people go to get more information about Whitewall and the products and services you offer? 
Um, yeah, that's pretty easy. You simply go to whitewall.com. That's our website where you can find all our products. Uh, we have different product groups that you can flip through. And as I said, um, also you could upload your image and mm -hmm. try different frames and different mm -hmm. product options. Great. Well, thank you so much for being a guest today. Best wishes to you and looking forward to seeing more from White Wall coming soon. Thank you very much, Gary. Thanks for having us. Thank you for listening to the Dead Pixel Society podcast. Read more great stories and sign up for the newsletter at www.thedeadpixelssociety.com.